Hello everyone and welcome to Beast Quest Beast Review Series 21, The Sorcerer's Revenge. Um, I'm your host Adam Ferns and uh, this actually sounds like a great intro, wow. I've, after so many videos I finally got an intro. Okay, so um, Series 21, as an overall perspective without giving too much away, is a good series. Some beasts are a bit disappointing with how much expectations I had for them. But other beasts are not, and actually pull through for what I expect, uh, what I expected from them. Sorry. That, without any further ado, let's get right into it. So, first beast we have is Scrime on the Bison Horror. Now, as I will say this before I really start with his scores, I do judge the design aspects on the cover. And I and especially for these newer generation books, I um, do the total for designs there already, and write down my thoughts on them. That's already set in stone. Like series twenty two and twenty three are already done for that part. Um, so for Grimon's design, I did give a nine as it was, as it was very um, unique at the time. Well, when I saw it anyway, and um, I found it really intimidating. Uh, I only come to realise that it's a it's a damn mole, it's a giant mole. So that was a bit disappointing. But because, as I said, these are set in stone, so I can't really change that now. Grimon does have a high score for design. Trust me, he needed it. Um, the abilities for Grimon is a seven out of ten, as um, it's not really that impressive. It can dig on underground. It's got slimy fur, and its tendrils can be used as extra claws. Uh, the, these purple things but that's it that that's pretty much it it's got a thick hide and slimy fur it can dig underground and it's tendrils coming to use of course that's it uh the fight i'm giving a 7 out of 10 for for the simple reason uh it's basically komodo uh <laughs> it the fight with komodo was basically tom sliced off his tail he fell down a cliff and died Grimon didn't lose a tail. He fell down a dirt hole and snapped his own neck. Boy! We're at series 21 and yet you can still snap your neck. What the hell? What the hell is wrong with this? What the? Okay, either... Okay, I feel like I just saw something because it's like a... Little flash of light coming from the corner of my eye. Uh, okay, but what the heck? Like, series 21. A uh, great design beast dies by a ne neck snap. I'm disappointed. Oh, God. Anyway, the total for Grimon is a 23 out of 30. Great design, but the abilities are boring. And the fight was basically Komodos, which is another major problem. If you recreate a fight... That sound that is similar to another beast. Make it seem better. The next beast does it better because it because this fight is basically a rehash of tusks, and I hate tusk. So up next is Scra the Night Scavenger. Um, design is an eight out of ten. Not as interesting as what I thought Grimon's was, but it was actually true to his damn design. But um. I like the purple fire on its back because it's actually unique because we haven't seen a purple fiery beast before. And um, the fact that it's basically a cross of multiple animals is something which I kind of find interesting. Um, the abilities are a 7 out of 10 because it is fast, we've seen that before. Sharp claws, we've seen before. But its claws can melt, its claws can um, set fire or melt what it touches. And if he gets washed with a bunch of water, he can evaporate it. But if it's like a large amount of water, like a lake, he will need to rest from it. But apart from that, he absorbs water. Um, I was meant to say in Rykar's review, though, his fireballs can melt rock, but they can't evaporate water as well as Skra's. So Skra does beat Rykar there. Um, the fight against Skra is 8 out of 10 because, like I said, with Tusks, Teamwork um, is something that I look for for in a fight, which is what this has. 
and um, basically getting hit by a trunk. It throws the logics of Pokemon out the window. Water is weak to fire. Fire evaporates water. Okay, okay, okay. Fire strong against grass. A tree trunk beats fire. What the f- What the hell? <laughs> uh, but okay, um... <laughs> it was good. And um, I think it was um, rather fitting as well as... Um, it. I liked it. Like, I liked the fight. It did involve teamwork and... Um, the fight before that where it showed how strong Scra was evaporating water and also um, melting the ground that he touched. He's going to be a formidable opponent in Battle of the Beasts. Oh, God, that is, that is really good. Oh, God, my throat's starting to get dry because this is a back-to-back -back recording with the last video and I've got a bunch more videos to do. <laughs> uh, I really should have recorded this one last as... This is going to be uploaded last, but, um, up next is Tarantix the, wait, total for Scra is 23 out of 30. It's a good design, and fight and the abilities were good, um, but they come with obvious flaws to them, or drawbacks. That being, if you absorb too much water, you're going to need to rest, which is going to cost him in Battle of the Beast, but hopefully he won't need to do that. So I'd like to see Scra make it really far in this tournament. Uh, speaking of which, I finished it earlier today. <laughs> Up next is Tarantix a Bone Spider. This one I was looking forward to, for the simple reason, we haven't seen a Spider Beast since Arachnid. And um, it looks very interesting. Design, 7 out of 10. It is the weakest design out of all of them, but I, I'm giving it a 7 for the simple reason it is essentially a big arachnid, but spider fight. See, arachnid was a six, but Tarantix seven, so yay, a boost. Um, the abilities are an eight out of ten. Um, it's virtually indestructible, like Stritor was. It can regrow its limbs, and um, it can shoot out a sticky goo, like arachnid's web, that can trap her victims, where she can eat them or drink their blood, like proper spiders should. Um, I believe there's another uh, one, I'm, I believe there's another ability I'm thinking of, but I actually can't remember it, so um, those abilities must be really good, and I personally think they are, because, um, yeah, because as I just saw my summary of it, the regeneration one, and the fact it's virtually indestructible, is the part which basically summarises this beast, and why I gave it a high score for abilities. The fight is an 8 out of 10, though, no? for the simple reason. Um, do I have a reason for this? Uh, do, I, do I have a reason? I should have a reason. I think I do. Do I really, though? I don't know. So, uh, yeah, let's do it. Okay, um, the fight is an 8 out of 10. For the simple reason, it was the king, the queen, and their guards, along with Tom, versus Tarantix. Whilst um, Alina was flying on Storm, Storm had wings, uh, with the new baby boy, with the new baby um, of the king and queen, uh, back, to Avan back to the city of Avantia, so then he'll be safe. Whilst everyone else fought Tarantix, it wasn't until Ferno, this is extra points for him by the way, came flying in. Already really weak because all the beasts were knocked out and they just woken up. He's still rather weak. He shoots fire at Tarantix, not killing her, her, but making her bones very brittle and fragile. One slash of Tom's sword going underneath kills Tarantix, making a bunch of goo come out, sinking her into the ground. That's mental! I love it! Um, <laughs> And the total for that is 23 out of 30. That's a Third 23 out of 30 this so far. Um, the fight was the best so far. The abilities to make in Tarantix, the abilities were make what did make Tarantix one of the most hardest beasts to beat. And that is not a bad um, accomplishment. Um, hold on. Uh, really? Okay. I feel like I've done something wrong with the adding up. So I was looking at the totals for each beast and then with the totals for all the attributes. And I think I got a different number. Uh, 
So that's that would be uh I can't do math. Oh god, and um my calculator's there, uh, so uh sorry about this brief um pause, but I, I need to get this I need to sort this out because I'm not sure if this is right. Uh so bear with me for a second. Uh, okay, hopefully I can do this whilst I'm doing a review on the last book. But um so the last book is Lipida the uh Shadow Fiend. Uh <laughs> The design is a 9 out of 10, as you, you should know. I love my bug-like beasts, and to have a beast like as as fresh looking and intimidating as this, and being based off a moth, is very creative, and I need to appreciate it, because it's actually really good. I love it. Um, the abilities are 7 out of 10, as it can fly, its tail can be used as a whip, it has an ear-piercing screech, and its wings are incredibly sharp. Um, so rather basic ab abilities, but still pretty good. Um, the fight is an eight out of ten, <coughs> as it was Lipida versus Marvel versus Tom and Alina, and I think Dowtech. Um, it was good, but that's not the reason why I had it here. The reason why I had it here is because Marvel was against Lipida to try and kill it, kill her. So then, all the beasts of the underworld can be rele released. But, Daltek opened up a portal where the beasts of the netherworld, not the underworld, can come out where Lipida was supposed to go in. And just, there was a loss at stake here. If one thing went wrong, game over. And, um, to add on with that, um, <laughs> it then ended up with Tom Sparta kicking Marvel into the abyss where he went into the netherworld. And according to what Dowsek said, he should be dead. So, um, so with that being said, the total for Lipida is 24 hours of 30. The best book of this series, as with every, any finale. The abilities were seen before, but the design is incredible. Now, please bear me for this brief pause whilst I do some math. So, 9 plus... I'm doing it with the designs. 9 plus 8 plus... 7 plus 9. Okay, the total for designs are 33 out of 40. Uh, amazing designs throughout the series. Honestly, the best set so far. And they are for... I wouldn't say just the new new age. For the new generation. But for the entire series. Excuse me. Um, now I'll add the abilities. 7787. Okay, total for abilities are 29 out of 40. Mediocre abilities, most were seen before, but none of them were boring. Which is a great improvement from Series 20, because as you know, I hated Series 20. Um, now the fights, that would be a 7 for Grimon, 8 for Scra, 8 for Tyrantix, and 8 for Lipida. 31. Ah, right, okay. I'm stupid. Okay, so um, the total for... Uh, the fight is 31 out of 40. Good fights throughout the entire series. It was dragged down by Grimon, though. It would have been a rather good 32, but because of Grimon's um, rehash of Komodo, yeah, uh, it wasn't good. Uh, now, with the those totals, it should get 94, 93. Yeah, 93. Now I add these totals up as well just to make sure I got it right. 23 plus 23 plus 23 plus 24. 93. Right. Okay. So there's my mistake. I added up the fights wrong. Okay. So um, the grand total is 93 out of 120. Overall, a great series. Um, abilities isn't as great, isn't a great score like the previous seasons, but the others are good, and it was really close to being tied with the series with the best set of beasts. Well, with the best beast of you, the best beast of you, I believe, is series nineteen, Kingdom of Dragons, and that's another season I really liked. 
And now, with that being said, we now go on to the rankings, which is probably the um, part which isn't needed for these reviews. But um, it's what I'm going to do. And after that, seven episodes of ranking all the Beast Quest books from series 1 to 20. God, I'm going to be here for a while. <laughs> They'll be divided in episodes of, fifth, of books of 15. So that'd be seven episodes. Uh, the, fifth, the sixth episode would have 17, no. And the final episode would have 20. Uh, I like my top 20 to be in the same episode. But anyone going on with the rankings of series 21. Last Space is obviously the worst. Grime on the Bison Horror. And it's only here. It's not a god-awful beast. The only reason why it's here is because of its fight being so much like Komodo's. Its design disappointed me. And its abilities are kind of basic. But apart from that, it's an okay beast. Next is Tarantix the Bone Spider. Now, um... This one, I wanted to put second, but the reason why I didn't is because its design did pull it down a bit, and the fact that um, it's kind of a rehash of Strytor, um, also being a bone dragon, that one. A skeleton dragon, actually. But having the regeneration is similar to bringing himself back to life, uh, just less cool. So, um... Yeah, Tarantix goes here, and I need to be honest, the story in this one isn't as good as second place, which is Skra. And Skra gets second place for its story being great. The villagers um, almost killed Arcta, uh, which I would not really mind, but still. Um, and its abilities aren't great, but I was really tempted to give Skra an 8 for abilities as well. The, thing, the reason why I didn't is because... Um, I like. I would have liked to see another ability. Like, like we had great abilities for that beast, but I wanted to see another one where it could boost it up to eight, maybe even nine. Um, and now moving on to the best book of this series, in my opinion anyway, Lipida, the Shadow Fiends. Now, the reason why it's here, design is incredible. I love bug be like beasts. And to have a beast based off a moth, a not very intimidating creature, seem... Very damn intimidating in the book. It's great. So I showed the picture of this beast to so many friends. And each of them said. "If I asked them a question. If you got to rank this beast on 1 to 10 for design. Uh, this is people that don't read Beast Quest by the way. They all said 8 or 9. Maybe 10. So I went with the middle number of that. Which was also what I would have said anyway. So, it's a unanimous agreement that its design is great for a beast that's, that's based off an animal that's not intimidating at all. Abilities did draw it back, but I'm not going against that because it's still rather good abilities. And the fight was amazing with a sparser kick for Tom to Marvel into the pit where hopefully he's gone for good. I'm not saying I don't like him, but he's had... So many time he has so many plans to take over Avantia. Let the other villains have a chance. Kenza, Sampeo, um, Jezrin, the one that's in the next season, which I already read the first book. So Rhea, let them have a chance. Let them let them have more than one chance, Marvel. You had so many. And with that being said, that is all for this time. If you like what you saw or heard, leave a like, leave a comment, don't forget to subscribe, press the notification bell down in the comment below. Before I do the rankings of all the books, apart from these ones, I'm going to get a drink, my throat is dry, and I'll see you next time.